Hello everybody, Clay Manufacturing. We're gonna go over how to use this 3D sensor, also known as a Hymer, to touch off our work coordinate system for the X, the Y, and the difference from Z from here to my tabletop. If you are with me in my other video, we used a tool setter, this is a zero setter, excuse me, for the Z axis, we touched off all of our tools on a global position right here. And I'm t we told it that our zero is reference point is right here. And in Fusion, let's open this bad boy up. In Fusion, my work coordinate system is on this back right corner. So this tells me my X is here, my Y is here, and my Z zero for the work coordinate system, this guy right here, it's this top plane of my part. It's this part right here. So what I need to do with a Hymer is, since I touched all my tools and said this is my zero surface, I need to tell the control what the distance is from this surface to this surface. With this Hymer, you can do X, Y, and Z, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. And just to reiterate, I'm going to locate my work coordinate system for my tool, my G54. The first axis I'm gonna do is the X. And with this Hymer, I really just, I push, I run it into my part until those dials on the bottom and top zero out to zero, zero. And I don't have to account for an offset. Like if you're using a wobbler, like an, a mechanical edge finder, you would have to do, they're usually a 200 diameter, so you have to offset either positive or negative um, 100,000 depending on what access you're doing and where. This one's super easy. I'm gonna go handle jog, and I'm gonna go in my 1,000 movements, and I wanna select my X axis. And I'm gonna drive my spindle positive to the right. It's not the table direction, but in theory what direction the spindle's going through the material. And from here, I just gently walk my part into my dial until I get zero, zero, until both those hands are on zero. And now it's getting close, so I wanna slow down. Boom. So my top hand is on zero, my bottom one is on zero, and I don't have to account for the diameter of that, it's calibrated to it. All I have to do on my control is I'm in tool, I'm in my tool offsets now, so that's setting for the individual tools. I need to go to work. So I can either use the cursor button to go up and over to get into my work, and I'll go back to show you another way, or if I know how to read, I can hit F4, located here, and if I click F4, it pops me right on over there. And before I did this, actually I screwed up a bunch of times, so they're zeroed out. Um, if someone has been on your machine before, depending on which work coordinate system they're working off of, there could be values already, already in here. I zeroed all my values out. I'm going to set X, and that orange cursor is extremely important. Think orange is the new gold. If you have your orange cursor on Y, and you do part zero set, but you're really setting your X, you just set the wrong axis. So I wanna make sure that cursor is on the appropriate axis. It is, and all I have to do now is I'm gonna do part zero set, and as soon as I hit it, boom, I found my X location. I don't have, that's, that's it. And I'm gonna do my Y the same way. I'm just gonna go handle jog. I'm gonna go my 1,000 movements. I'm gonna go X. I'm going to slowly walk this off my part. I'm gonna go positive Y. I'm gonna go behind it. And I'm gonna go X. I kind of went a, a bit too far. Uh, that's sufficient. And I'm gonna come po uh, negative and Y. I'm just walking nice and slow until I start getting my dials moving. I'm gonna walk it in nice and slow. I'm on my one thou movement, so each click I do is a thou. And that is looking money. I like what I see. I come over here, and what do I gotta be in? Not in my tools, but in my work. So if I hit F4, or if I use this cursor here and toggle up 
and over I can go to work, but I'm gonna cheat and use the F4. Now my cursor, again, I wanna make sure my orange cursor is on the correct axis, it is, and when it's there, I'm gonna hit part zero set because I'm setting my part work coordinate system. One, so part zero set, got it. Now this is the kind of tricky part for using uh, my setup where I'm using a tool setter and this Heimer. Right now, I just need to get my Heimer. I'm gonna jog my, my spindle, I'm gonna drive it forward. So my spindle in theory is gonna move positive. And on this one, I don't have it, but on some of the older controls, this goes positive, this goes negative. And I wanna go positive. And you can also kind of watch the dials. If you start going in the red, that means you're going the wrong way. I'm going positive. I'm just getting my part off of there. I'm gonna go Z positive. Okay, so now we have found our X zero, Y zero according to our work coordinate system for our, this edge and this edge. Now we need to tell it where this is located. We touched all our tools off of this surface and said that's our zero for our tools. So now we need to tell the difference from the end of our tool touch off to where our zero is for our G54. Right now, I'm just gonna simply jog this over and go straight down into the surface and we're gonna zero it out. Let's see if I can do it without crashing while you're watching. I'm gonna go pretty fast and as I get closer, I'm gonna slow it down. And I wanna make sure, uh, why is my hand? <laughs> I wanna make sure I do not hit my vise with my Heimer. That would be a good $400 mistake. And when I get about an inch away, I'll move to my one foul movements. 0 0.001, I'm still going negative in Z. And now I need to be real careful. And when I get a few thou away, like here, I'm gonna go to my 10th movements, my 0 0.0001. That was three zeros. I'm gonna creep in on my zero, zero. And that's looking pretty darn good. So from here, I want to go to position. And depending where you're at up here, you might have to cursor over. I wanna to go to operator. And this is a cool area where you can zero out axes and have like a digital readout. So you don't have to do math. Now I wanna zero out my um, Z. It's highlighted in yellow, so I could go origin, or if you read, you can just type the axis plus the letter, or plus origin, and it'll zero it out. So right now, since Z is highlighted, I'll come, where's my origin button? Right here, and I'll press origin. Now that thing's zeroed out. What I'm telling it is, this is my zero reference point, and I'm gonna let it, as I jog up and find the top of that surface, I'm gonna use that counter. So I've zeroed out the Heimer, that's zero, and I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna jog up. So I'm gonna handle jog, Z positive. <clears throat> and I need to locate the top of that surface. Oops, I need to go slower. Let's go to 1000 movements. And I'll show you how, where the magic really happens. We're just gonna zero this out like you've seen me do already. Now I'm gonna go to my 10th. Get it pretty darn close. That looks good. The hands are on zero, zero. So again, what I'm telling it is I've gotta tell it the distance from this where I touch my tools off where the zero is to where my zero for my G54 is. Since I set my counter, the operator in this column, if I hit this screen for where are we, position, this is, I zeroed it out, remember? And I jogged up and ran it to zero. And so now in my offsets, I have this reference point right here. And I wanna put that value in my G54. And it's already there, so let's pretend real quick I did this a second ago and messed up. So let's say that's zero right now. And I wanna put this positive value in here. And I'm telling it that's my distance from where I touched my tools off 
to where my zero is for my G54. So I'll simply populate on the input line 5.4952. That is this value, 5.4952, 5.4952. Now, if there was data in here and you hit enter, it would add together whatever is in there. I like to just go straight to F1. So whatever value is in there, it will set to the value that I enter into my input line. So if I go F1, it'll give me a prompt. I will say Y for yes. And that number, 5.4952, is now here. And I'll show you a quick way I can verify my tool. So I've already touched off the tool for that pocket T7. I'm going to go handle jog Z. I want to get this puppy out of here. Let's go faster. And let's see. Let's pull him out. We're going to do this quick. Hopefully I don't mess up. This is my ball end mill. And we're just going to kind of show you how you can double check your lengths if you're uncertain. I rarely, rarely do this because I trust the process, but we're going to kind of confirm, since I've touched this off already, we're going to confirm the zero from the end of my tool to this surface according to our G54. I'm going to handle jog because it should be zero at the top of my material. You could use a gauge block and check right on top. I don't like chipping up my tools. I'm just going to go. So now, when I go to Z0 on my G54, I should have a zero on there when the end of the tool looks like it's on the same plane as my part. Handle jog, Z. We're going to just jog that Z to zero. Getting there. We're gonna pretend it's zero. Three tenths, I ain't gonna notice three tenths with my eye. So my G54 is now at zero. And you can do the same. If you go to X zero, Y zero, the end of that sphere should be over the corner, that this back corner. But we're still looking at our Z height. And we got a little coolant buildup on there. Let's get that off. And I'm gonna go handle jog. I'm gonna go X and get it close. So now that's kind of a way you can see that the end of your tool was touched off correctly and your work was touched off correctly because they, they appear to be on the same plane. And if I jogged them back to this corner, it should align. We'll see if my computer boots fast. It should align. That sphere should be right over there because that's your X0, Y0. Hope this video helped. Um, I really, really recommend touching off tools off of a global position on your table. It makes your life so much easier versus touching all your tooling off your work because your work always varies in size. You forget to load tools, you break tools. And if you've already started machining, you break a tool, then you're gonna have to figure out how much material has been removed, touch it off. And if you don't have any flat surface, how are you gonna do that? It creates a nightmare. I highly recommend using, if you don't have a probe system on your machine, using either a zero setter or a gauge block or a, some reference off your table. And then you only have to tell the machine the difference from your workpiece one time from here to here. It's super helpful. Hope this helps. Bye.